This calendar is not what you think. On the surface, it seems like a regular degular calendar that keeps track of appointments, but what if it can do more than that? What if it could run automations based off of the descriptions? For example, let's say I'm going on vacation for three days and I want to automatically put my home in vacation mode. I can write it right here. Let's say I'm on vacation. Put the house. Right, I can add it right there and the home will automatically change the state to vacation mode once the time elapsed, so whenever that day is. Now, this is not a new idea. I was looking through Home Assistant forums and I saw a post with someone asking how they can do something similar. And that's where I got this idea from. The solution proposed was to use text search against the title of the calendar. And if certain words appeared, then the trigger would hit off and then the automation would do its thing. Now that we have AI, I have a better solution, which has two extreme benefits. The first is that you can reuse automations and prevent automation Now, what do I mean by that? At minimum, you would need to create one new automation for each scenario. In this case, you would need an automation that would look at the calendar title and then change the mode of the home when the text is seen. If you want to create a different automation using a word, let's say like banana, you would then need to create a second automation and then so on and so on. So for each new thing, you would need a new automation. Hence, and this gets worse if you have to create more than one automation for a single new feature. Now, some of you in the Home Assistant community, you Home Assistant pros you, are probably thinking, <laughs> yes, all I need is one automation. I will add multiple triggers and use the condition statements to match the actions that I want. <laughs> I'm so smart. And sure, you could do that. You could. But that's equivalent to basically having a bunch of if else statements in a single function. Is that good or bad? I'm not gonna get into that. My point is that if you use AI, you would only need to update the prompt. And in some cases, you don't even need to make any changes. The second best benefit is... Get excited. Let me explain how this calendar control system concept works. And this is gonna show you how the second benefit comes into fruition. We're going to follow the 3R framework, reading, reasoning, and responding. Reading phase. Home Assistant lets you call for calendar events, which is here. Now this will give you the title, dates, start and end times, stuff like that, you get the picture, right? You can get the calendar events from Home Assistant. And the calendar events are gonna be your input for the reasoning phase. Now this is where the AI interprets the events and figures out what to do. In my home, K is my AI powered smart home assistant and it uses the choreography pattern to control automations. This is not a static list of if else's or canned responses. For better or for worse, it uses AI to make dynamic decisions. We're now stepping into the world of AI smart home agents, like we're in the agentic territory. This is where you're going to see the amazing second benefit I talked about. Now, I need you guys to put on your seatbelt and protect your minds because this is going to get wild. In the reasoning phase, the AI is given a list of things that it's able to do and based on the prompt, it will decide on its own how to fulfill it. For my home, these are all the things it can do. Matter of fact, it's hard to see here, so let me just move this out the way, move this out the way, and then back, back, back the hell up. Yeah, all of this, it can do all of that. And it's all controlled by the choreographer. Remember how I mentioned in the first benefit of my solution is that it can reuse existing automations and prevent K already has automation logic for changing the house mode. Let's zoom in, zoom, 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 zoom. House mode right here, right there. In its current form, it can change it to guest, to active, to protected, or sleep. Like those are the modes that my house can shift between. And my smart home, K, can change between all of them very easily using this logic highlighted here. All I need to do to add in this new capability of being able to go into vacation mode is this. House mode. Let's come and click on this. And then let's just add a new one to the list called vacation. And that's it. Ah! 
that's it. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's it. When has automating and updating your smart home been that easy? Guys, guys, I'm sorry. In my enthusiasm, I didn't clearly articulate what the second and best benefit is. In your smart home, you're gonna have a lot of individual automations. For example, you might have an automation that will toggle lights when you enter and exit rooms, or an automation that will adjust the thermostat when you leave, or an automation that sets the atmosphere for bedtime, movie time, or sexy time when you press a button. You get the picture. When you add AI into the mix of all of this, you're gonna have the option of adding all of these individual automations into the AI's tool belt, which will give it the power to trigger these automations autonomously. So if you wanted to set the atmosphere for sexy time, I mean for uh, movie time, you can press a button like you did before, or you can now say to your smart home something to the tune of, we're gonna watch Netflix and chill in about 10 minutes. And then 10 minutes later, it will activate movie time. And then if it's really clever, it will activate sexy time too. But here's where the benefit comes in. If you needed to update sexy time automation or add in a new mode like study time or even create a brand new separate automation like watering the garden, no pun intended, you're not just making a single automation better, you made your entire smart home better. Essentially, you just made the AI smarter and it's able to do a lot more. With a single change, you created two new outcomes and improved single automation, the thing that you've done before manually, and you've created and improved the smart home agent. It now can take advantage of that new improvement. Two for the price of one. Crash course for you guys. It's the choreographer's job to simply find the right automation or business logic. You can have several business logics, and as you see, I have a ton, but you can have several, but the rule is that the business logic must be self-contained, or how I like to put it, kissed dry. Another way that you can look at it is that the automations themselves, like for instance, this one here, needs to be specific in purpose and generic in implementation. The specific purpose of this one here is to simply change the mode of the house. That's its specific single job. Its implementation is generic where it doesn't say specifically what it's gonna change it to. It can change it to anything, whether it's home, sleep, protected, or vacation, it will generically change it to whatever the input requires. Specific in purpose, generic in implementation. In a nutshell, all this does is that it simply grabs all the modes, Right here, it's going to give it to the AI, and then here, it's going to pick the right one and then apply it to the home. You're not gonna see anywhere in here something to the tune of, if calendar.title contains vacation, then set house mode to vacation. No, you're not gonna see that. Prior to this moment, this automation was specifically used by my chat feature. I could type in Telegram or Telassist, and then it can change the house mode to sleep or protected or whatever whatever I told it to do. So right here is Telegram and on this side is Home Assistant. Set the house to, I don't even have to say vacation. I can just do it that way. Look at that, changed. I'm back, active. I can even get really vague-ish and if you like guest mode equals guest. Just like that. Now, those use cases are automatically updated too. My entire system got smarter with just a single word. To widen your perspective, I'm gonna show you something different. I'm gonna show you something new, or at least I wanna present this to you. I now have technically a new trigger for my automations. <sighs> okay, that made no sense. That made no sense. Let me back up a little more. In my personal smart home, I have four ways to talk to Kay. Telegram, assist, I can talk via voice through Home Assistant PE, and I can talk via voice through my smart home via webhook. Now I have a fifth one, and that's through a calendar. My home can now look at my calendar, and Kay can trigger automations using the events that it gives as an input. Let me be clear, I am crazy. It's wild here at my home because a lot of things break and I'm consistently exploring new ideas. You do not need five ways to talk to your smart home. I do this to satisfy my itch in the back of my mind and I cannot wait for anyone else 
whether it be brand or person. So I come up with these solutions myself. I'm showing it to you because it's gonna galvanize some of you into action and post your ideas, which is gonna then feed my ideas. And then we all can move closer and closer to oblivion. I am showing you because some of you have the same itch that I do. And your boy here has come to give you a good scratch. Don't mind me, I'm just a random guy on the internet. The way I showed you is based off of my setup. So don't get hung up on the details. You can hard code it if you like. The idea is that you get the concept and then you implement it in the way that works best for you. Do it how you feel comfortable. If you're interested though, in building out this type of agentic style smart home, check the link in the description for the automation trilogy. Not only do I walk you through these concepts, but I even provide you a copy of my setup so you can play around with it and use the techniques that I show you. This is not for everyone though. If you're fine with your setup or you're just a little bit curious, don't bother. Don't bother. Just subscribe to the channel, join the Tech Enthusiast community, and I think you're going to get a lot of tidbits there that should satisfy your curiosity. But you, you there, the one whose mind was not only blown, but is currently racing off without its seatbelt. I, I warned you, I warned you, put it on. And, and just imagining the new possibilities. This, this is for you. It doesn't matter if you have a tiny bit of experience with Node Red or you don't know it at all. It doesn't matter. The trilogy is going to help you. It's going to help you with that too. You have no excuses. Go and check it out and see if it's something you want to get into. Okay, so this is the last one, responding phase. The smart home needs to simply inform you that it worked, that's it. Since your calendar automation will trigger in the future, you will need a way for it to tell you that it saved the automation or that it worked. Something to that effect, it just needs to do something. I'm actually gonna show you this in action now. I've been teasing you with it, let's, let's actually go through it. To get the lay of the land, here we are. The house mode is currently active. We currently have no events coming up. We're gonna change that really soon. And a matter of fact, let's actually do that. So let's say going to, where should we go? Jamaica. And then let's say set the house to vacay mode. And then let's take this, it's the 16th. So we're gonna set it to 631. That's the next time it's gonna go off. All right, and then we're gonna add the event. At 631, this thing's gonna fire off. So let's head back over to here. We have about another 40 seconds. So just to recap, here's what we're expecting. Get calendar event's gonna trigger. We're gonna check to see if it has a description. In our case, it says set the house to vacay. Next, we're gonna set some values. And this is super simple. All we're doing is we're taking the description and we're just making it easier to grab and we're sending it into this message property. It's gonna go into the choreographer. Choreographer is gonna look at that message property and it's gonna determine what to do next. In our case, that's gonna be run the house mode. And this logic is isolated. It's gonna do its thing. It's gonna change the house mode like we've seen before. And then everything should work. So in two, one, and then begin. So we can see all of this is going off. Everything triggered. If I check telegram really quick, we can see that your automation has been fired. Kind of bad grammar, but whatever. If we check home assistant, we can see that we still have this event. And if we check the other side, we can see that it turned to vacation mode. Now, if some of you were wondering and were kind of on the fence about, could this be done with home assistant alone? I'm gonna save you the trouble and say, maybe. <laughs> I know that doesn't help, but it's always maybe when it comes to tech. I'm not gonna figure that out for you, right? I'm not gonna figure out how to do this with Home Assistant. To be very honest, it's not interesting to me. Home Assistant is extremely flexible, but not that flexible. More specifically, it's not flexible in my hands. Perhaps some of you out there, perhaps you, you're, you're a Home Assistant expert or you're a Home Assistant guru, and you're really good at scripts or creating, let's say, integrations. Great, like, I, I really, really, really encourage you to replicate the stuff that I'm showing here and, and, and do this natively within Home Assistant. Like replicate this power and flexibility in Home Assistant integration. And, and, and not as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I want you to create it and then post it in the Tech Enthusiast community so everyone else can see it and try it, including your boy. I much prefer using native Home Assistant integrations where I can, especially if it provides like a large value. For example, right? I have a Tech Enthusiast community member 
that did exactly that. When the Home Assistant team created Assist, Nigel Rablin reached out to me and told me about his integration, HA Conva. To this day, I still use it. It's what lets me treat Node-RED as a pipeline in Home Assistant. This gives me the ability to use K as an agent in Assist, right here. Here, uh, let's see. What are you capable of doing? Tell me, Kay, what are you capable of doing? Look at all of that. Answering questions, controlling smart home devices, managing home modes, oh, look at that. Curating music experiences, helping to create and manage to-do lists and reminders, weather updates, storing documents, visual recognition. Get out of here, man, just get out of here. I'm so freaking awesome. Another great example of this is LLM Vision. Because of this integration, I don't have to create crazy logic in Node-RED to read my camera streams and get responses from an LLM. This Home Assistant integration does it for me and I can call it within Node-RED. Here, let's kind of jump out. Let's go to here to automation and scenes. Right here, this vision drivers, vision drivers right here. I actually created this script within Home Assistant using the integration. And then within Node-RED, I have a kiss to dry automation that can call the script and answer questions that require a camera. And that is here. To be honest, this is a problem. I, I don't think a person should have this much power. Now that I'm thinking about this, this is just, this is just nuts. If you're curious about how LLM vision works and how you can use its awesome powers, just check out this next video. Ah oh, man, I'm done. Bro, this is wild. Watch this very scientific and legitimate real world test. The phone is placed on the chair right in front of the camera. A message is sent to the smart home, first by text, and then by voice. Okay, Nabu. 